The function of adding plaster to the mounted diagnostic models is an excellent way to finish the models for a presentation either to a patient, a study club, a colleague, and it gives the models a very professional look and allows for the uh, finalization of the mounting procedures. Ideally, in the mounting procedure, you use just enough mounting stone to allow for attaching the model to the plate uh, and articulator. This leaves space then for the addition of a softer material in the form of white model plaster. The access to the mounting plate and the base of the model is critical so that the mounting stone does not interfere with the finish of the mounting plaster. This is accomplished by removing any nodules or extensions of the mounting stone that might impede the smooth placement of the mounting plaster. These adjustments can be done on the lathe or can also be done with a lab knife. Using the lathe is much more fast and also uh, allows for uh, easier finishing of the harder mounting stone. It's important to note here that when using the lathe, your hands are braced on the tabletop and you're holding the appliance and the model in such a way that the burr will not jump onto the occlusal surfaces or any of the anatomic surfaces of your model. Care should also be taken not to damage the blue panadent mounting plate that attaches to your articulator. Once you have achieved reduction of any excess mounting stone, you're now ready to mix plaster that you can then add to the mounted model and mounting plate. The plaster should be mixed to a consistency that allows the clinician to manage its placement of your mounted model without having it droop or fall onto the countertop. So once the model is moistened, you can then begin the process of adding the uh, plaster to the mounted models in a way similar to you would do if you were frosting a cupcake in order to get a nice smooth finish without overlapping onto the model surfaces or the underneath of the mounting plate. As you can see here, care should be taken to gradually place incrementally the additions of the white mounting or the white soft plaster. You can see that a smooth finish can be achieved using the spatula and you rotate the model as you continue to make additions, adding the material carefully so that it blends between the base of the model and the attachment surface of the blue mounting plate. Excess plaster that may inadvertently go onto the blue plastic mounting plate can be easily removed once this material has hardened. However, when you get the plaster on the stone model, it is a little more difficult to remove, especially after it has hardened. Therefore, at a certain stage in your finishing, it is valuable to carefully remove the plaster from the stone model of the teeth in order for it to reveal a nice finish on the model. In this process, is it, impo it is important to remove as many of the voids or bumps as you can to produce a relatively smooth initial finish to the plaster material. Our next step, as the initial set of the plaster occurs, you can then wet your finger and carefully remove excess plaster and begin to smooth even further the surface of the plaster that you've added to the mounted models. Note that it is important to hold the model in a certain way. Usually for my use, I like to put my thumb in the palatal area of the diagnostic model and my middle finger in the mounting magnet area of the blue mounting plate. 
This allows good access and easy rotation of the model while applying the white plaster to the mounted model. As always, now is a great time to clean your instruments while the plaster is still short of its initial set so that it washes out easily. You also need this time to allow the plaster that you've added to the mounted model to reach its initial set so that you can begin smoothing with finger, wetted finger as you can see here. This procedure allows for leaning, cleaning excess plaster that may have overlapped onto the mounting plate as well as that excess plaster that may have overlapped onto the diagnostic model, giving a clean finish and a professional look to your case. Note that the plaster is easily removed as it has not reached a hardened state yet. Once it is hardened, you would not be able to use this procedure for removing any of the plaster from either the mounting plate or the diagnostic model. This would have to then later be done with a laboratory knife, a dental lathe, or sanding paper, whichever is best. Note too that in moving the wet finger across the plaster, care should be taken not to exert too much downward force onto the plaster as it can also indent those areas where you're putting the force and cause a void and an unfinished look to your models. In the process of removing plaster from the dental model, it is important to hold the model in such a way that the slurry and water drops away from the teeth and not onto the teeth and gingival structures. Also at this point in the plaster setting, it is possible now to run water directly onto the plaster surface to rinse away slurry that may have uh, still remained after running a wetted finger across the surface where you are removing the excess plaster. The plaster contours should be a contiguous surface from the base of the model to the outer edge of the blue mounting plate, eliminating any bulges or voids that may have been created in applying the plaster. Additional plaster can be added if needed to correct these voids. A laboratory brush or a toothbrush can also be used carefully to clean the base of the mounting plate. At this point, the plaster should have reached an initial set that is just short of final hardening. Once that point is reached, you can begin to carefully use wet or dry sandpaper to now begin the final finish on the plaster that has been applied.